Hey everybody, it's Sunday afternoon and uh, actually I just got back from family vacation. Uh, the family and I, we've been working since, I don't know, it's been almost two years now of working 50, 60 hour weeks. And uh, we finally decided it was take, time to take a family vacation. So we went Thursday morning and we went up to Pigeon Forge, got a cabin in the Smokies. Uh, man, we relaxed, hot tub, went out to eat, uh, took the kids to some shows and did some stuff. But anyways, we just got back about an hour ago or so and I got a bunch of parts in for the Wagoneer. <clears throat> so I figured I would, uh, you know, give you guys a little bit of information on, on what's going on and what's left to finish this. I actually wanted to tell you that we are also going to be taking our uh, Wagoneer down to the uh, C10, the fall C10 revival down in Oakboro, North Carolina. I think that's October uh, 24th in North Carolina. So anyways, if y'all want to see Cliff the Wagoneer come out to a big C10 show, I know it's not a C10, but my C10's apart right now, and at least in Cliff the Wagoneer, we can all ride together with the AC on six and a half hours from here. So anyways, one of the first things that I want to show you guys is power steering. This is a kind of a quirky, weird thing that you have to do on swapping an older vehicle with a steering gearbox uh, to an LS motor more modern power steering pump so this fitting is probably first and foremost the most important one in in uh, the pressure side of the the power steering system this is the adapter fitting uh, that goes in the back of our type 2 pump the type 2 pump is kind of what holly at least puts in a lot of their accessory drives and it's actually a pump that's pretty common in um, a bunch of accessory drives that you would buy for an ls motor so from the factory, the GM pump will have a fitting similar to this. Uh, so I don't have one right now to show you, but it'll have a fitting like this screwed up into the bottom of the pump. Uh, and then it'll have um, female threads inside of it that um, like the factory GM hard line would have threaded into. Um, what you do is you take that fitting out of the pump now there will be a valve in there that floats up and down in the bore and then a spring behind it. Don't let those things come out of there and don't let any contamination, dirt or anything get up in that bore. Because uh, anything in there can cause the valve to stick and you'll lose power steering pressure. But anyways, we buy these from Turn 1 Steering. So here's where we're going to start getting a little bit more techie. Um, if you're running uh, like a modern Type 2 power steering pump and you're putting it, you're pressurizing a power steering gearbox a gearbox is going to need three gallons per hour um, so the orifice inside of this fitting is what determines the flow rate if you're going to run a rack and pinion now you'll have to call turn one really i suggest calling turn one every single time you're going to order one of these fittings but when you when you call and say you get a mustang 2 rack or a t-bird rack or something like that you're going to be in the 1.5 to 1.75 gallon uh, which will be a much tighter orifice. So anyways, when you're doing a box, make sure you get the higher gallon orifice uh, so, so that you'll get enough flow to the gearbox. You'll know right away if it's not a big enough orifice, it won't have pressure uh, at idle. You, you'll hear it moaning like crazy at idle. And it, won't, it won't have good, good assist. So anyways, we're gonna get this in and um, I'm gonna build, build the power steering pressure hose. Um, this is also another thing that a whole lot of people ask us about, how do you build the pressure hose? This is how we do it. We use uh, Earl's power steering fittings. Um, they are a reusable end and you have to make sure that you use those steel power steering fittings with their line. Um, this is all stuff that you guys can order through us. We would love to help you um, spec, you know, parts or you know help you uh get parts together to get to do your stuff but anyways i'm going to show you today too um i'm going to put this fitting in the pump and i'm going to build the power steering pressure hose and anyways we're going to get right at it so these are those steel power steering fittings from earl's and uh i've already got that adapter fitting in the pump and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to assemble these. These are probably the easiest fittings that, that we do, really. So you disassemble the, the fitting. And then this is the high pressure hose. Again, you, you have to use this 
this hose um, from Earl's. And um, I think Gates also makes a version of this hose, but, but this is good for 2,500 PSI. Power steering systems can get up to 16 to 1,800 PSI, I think. Um, so a normal AN hose is just only good for 250, 350 PSI. So you'll blow one of those apart. So anyways, what you do is you want to put the hose into the main fitting and then, and then the fitting itself threads into it and it pushes out of the hose and it gets pinched inside here. So, um, I also use the assembly lube from Earl's. This isn't a step that's completely necessary, but I like to put a little bit on the outside of the hose. And then inside the, the housing, uh, it, this is threaded, but it's reverse threaded. So when you put these things on, just kind of start to put them on and then push in and, and turn, turn to the right. And they are uh, reverse threaded and they'll, they'll thread themselves on. So what you want to do is when you get this, when you get this threaded on, I like to leave about a 16th between the end of the hose and, and bottoming out in the fitting. Um, the only reason I like to do that is I feel like after I've done a hundred of these, that's just ideal pressure for the fitting. Um, I used to max them out in there and this gets so tight by the last couple threads that I feel like I'm about to break these and I have broke one. But, so I leave like a 16th gap between the end of the hose and the fitting. And then you wanna apply lube to the threads, which is the, the most important thing about this, is uh, you have to oil the threads and the bottom of the shank there. And then just get the end of the fitting, end of the fitting to start into the rubber hose. You, you see it just pop in a little bit and then start to push in and thread by hand. Don't do this by wrench at first. Get that to, to thread in pretty good and then go to the vise. And then use one hand to hold the hose make sure that the hose doesn't spin and thread it in so you can see that there's pretty good resistance there on that last turn you can tell that it got tight another thing to tell you is um, steel wrench on steel fitting aluminum tools on aluminum fitting so anyways, this side's done. And we'll go ahead and put this in and, and then measure our length. As I mock up the fitting, and I go ahead and pre-terminate one of the ends so that when I go to put them together, it's easy for me to line this up and see where to cut them. So I made a mental note to cut this one between the zero and the five there. And I'm kind of holding my thumbnail on it. but. Again, that, that hose is gonna max out like right about there in the thing, so that's kind of what I'm looking for. Another thing is um, how to cut these. I use a band saw to cut these. Another way you can do it is a chop saw, where you can use like a three inch cutoff wheel. Um, don't use scissors or, or cutters. You could use hydraulic cutters. Um, those are fine, but um, easiest I think that I've found is the band saw or cutoff wheel and just make sure that you rinse the inside of this out and blow it out with an air gun. You don't want like little fragments of rubber to be inside this.
also are not swivel fittings, so you'll have to orientate them yourself. When you get in there, you'll have to kind of crack one, loose, crack it loose a little bit to get them to orientate right. So the pressure side's done. We installed the adapter fitting um, and snugged it up, and then we built the pressure hose, and uh, you saw how to assemble it. And then on these, these just get a hair more than snug, in my opinion. Uh, 30, a 37 degree GIC flare. Uh, the actual angle of the the face of the fitting and the the female side of the fitting is what seals it. So it doesn't need a lot of a lot of torque on the thread to make it work. So you can see we've already put the return side in of the gearbox. Um, it's just a factory hard line with a low pressure a low pressure hose that goes up to the reservoir. That's it. When we initially fill up a new gearbox and a new pump and all that stuff, we add all the fluid to the system. And then uh, without the engine running, we jack the front of the, ve the vehicle up and we cycle the steering wheel back and forth. Not all the way really lock to lock, but pretty close lock to lock a bunch of times. And you'll see it just working tons of air out. Um, I don't know, do it 20 times. And then we let it sit for about an hour. So any air that's, that's worked its way up in the fluid, like all those little bubbles disperse and go away. And then we top it off and then we do it again and do that a few times before we ever run the engine. So that way it doesn't have to take a chance of burning the pump up. So this Jeep's got a brand new gearbox and a brand new pump reservoir lines everything so it'll it'll take a bunch i guess by a bunch it'll take almost three pints without this this system doesn't have a cooler like the um motorsport drive you know like performance stuff you know we put big coolers on all those and they'll take you know four or five pints so that's two pints I really won't put any more than that now until it runs. Because when it runs, it like will find its own level and you'll top it off. Of